What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and it's been a very interesting week. Well, really, two weeks of finding out. I mean, um, effing around and finding out. In particular, it's a group of people that have really never suffered any consequence for their own idiocy and actions. That is, of course, rich, woke college kids. That's right. Students at Harvard and a uh, wide variety of other universities who grew up in a life of luxury uh, deciding to go out and celebrate, uh, well, we'll just say the loss of life over there in the sand. And uh, first it started with them losing job opportunities. Then it's, and then it escalated to having their pictures put on trucks driven around. Now they are begging for money due to, for their, to support their mental health. These are kids that are going to Harvard, okay? They're already super rich. They're begging for money to support their mental health and suffering after relentless bullying uh, over their support of the, uh, the paragliding uh, Terry's. I, I wish I could tell you I was making this up, but I am simply not. They are actually asking for money. Harvard's... Now, I also want to say, look... I can't really remember the various geopolitical uh, positions I had when I was in college 20 years ago. Remember, a lot of kids start college at 18 years old. Um, modern day 18 ain't like being 18 in the 1940s where you were already the head of the household practically. An 18 year old in 2023 is a baby. Um, they have very little life experience. Many of them have spent almost their entirety of their teen and formulative years on the internet terminally. Having a bad take in, uh, in when you're that young, I, I just, I, I remember what it was like to be young. I remember like cranking propaganda and like Crimpshine and all the 15 and all these bands. And, um, you know, really thinking, you know, fight the power, all this kind of stuff. You're young. That said, there is an element to effing around and finding out that is always hilarious to me. Harvard's Arab Alumni Association has appealed for donations to help students' mental health if they were subjected to relentless bullying and intimidation for blaming Israel for what happened to it. Now, the situation over there is uh, a long and convoluted one and one which many people draw certain sides. I don't really have a side in this other than, you know, I'm fine, um, you know, vaporizing Terry's. I'm fine with that. The, the rest of it, the land arguments, the, all this kind of stuff, uh, certainly both sides have done some heinous things. Um, I'd prefer they find a way to live peacefully. Now, if they haven't been able to do so for 2,000 years, whatever, however long, but it's fine. You know, I, I still would prefer that. The Harvard undergrad graduate Palestine Solidarity Committee issued a letter on October 7th, co-signed by 33 other Harvard student universities, stating that we, the undersigned student organizations, hold Israel entirely responsible for what's happening to them. The students leading the 33 organizations and the Solidarity Committee were named and faced calls to be black named were named and faced calls to be blacklisted from future employment. They include the son of British businesswoman, Joe Malone, who I don't know or care who that is. Now, what a lot of these universities seem to be forgetting is that uh, there's a lot of Jewish donors at these, and we're going to cover that a little bit later today. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of wealthy Jewish business owners that make huge donations to these colleges. There are a lot of wealthy Jewish business owners that hire f directly from the pipeline of these colleges. You're allowed to hold whatever opinion you want, especially here in America, but there are real consequences for that. Uh, and, and the fact that they're begging for money now is hilarious. This is the ultimate F around and find out. They have been subjected to relentless mean words and intimidation, the association wrote in a letter obtained by reporter John Hassan. 
The situation is rapidly deteriorating as some students find their names on watch lists, creating risks for their immigration status and future career prospects. Oops. 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 These are the exact same people that have always said, you have freedom of speech, but not freedom of consequence. That's why I will shed no tears. These are the exact same people that, that uh, cheer for deplatforming their enemies or people that they disagree with. Uh, so, no, I don't care. Our ask and plea is for all of you to extend your hand to these students and provide vital assistance they need within your... Why on earth would I give money to these people? You're already going to college. All you had to do was not screw that up. I mean, you're going to walk on to whatever job you want for the rest of your life because you have that opportunity. By the way, when I was in college, I don't really understand how all these kids have all this time for all these committees. Man, I was working 26.5 hours a week because that's the you know, maximum number of hours that Walmart would let me work without because then they didn't want to pay me health insurance or whatever. 26.5 hours a week plus going to school. I didn't have time to be on any lame committees. All right. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't really, I mean, sorry, not sorry. Neither Harvard nor the association have responded to the Daily Mail's request for comment. I mean, I think that it, it's funny. Like I said, they require legal counsel, health care, mental health support, financial aid, or mentorship to navigate these turbulent and uncertain times that they completely brought upon themselves of their own free will. I've always said that there's been a very, ear, a very easy, clear line of delineation when it comes to having an opinion on this conflict. When people initially celebrated basically everything that kicked this off, you know, at the festival, okay, it was very easy to say, like, I denounce that part particular thing, but I still support, I don't know, sovereignty for Palestinian people or whatever the case may be. Um, but these people didn't do that. They celebrated. They reveled in it. They uh, fantasized about doing it themselves. We saw that with Alicia Keys, I think her name is, or whatever, some stupid musician. Um, you know, all these university professors who are here in America, um, you know, living life very, very comfortably, um, want to insert themselves into that? Well, that's what happens. Cornell, another high-praised school, um, university professor calls the, the incident exhilarating and exciting. A Cornell University professor was caught on camera telling students that the incident was ex uh, exhilarating. I mean, I, 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 again, these people are showing you who they are. They live here in the United States, um, but, and they've got every opportunity available to them, but they still want to pretend like they're oppressed. You're some Palestinian kid going to an Ivy League school. Man, keep your head down and do your get take advantage of the opportunity. I imagine that's what your parents would want. Is that cold-hearted to say? Probably. But you got out. <laughs> like, make the best of it. Don't ruin your entire life uh, over this. That, that's, I mean, the, the idea that, like, here, UC Berkeley... Law professor urges, stu urges firms not to hire his own, quote-unquote, anti-Semitic stu students. A Berkeley law professor is warning future employees to not hire his own students. Stephen Davidson Solomon, who teaches corporate law at the University of California, Berkeley, claimed that some of his students at the college promoted hate towards uh, Jewish people and therefore should not be given jobs. My students are largely engaged and well-prepared, and I regularly recommend them to legal employers, Solomon wrote. But if you don't want to hire people who advocate for hate and practice discrimination, don't hire some of my students. I mean, he's also the advisor of Jewish Law Students Association, uh, lobbed the serious claims at his students after nine campus groups adopted a rule last year banning pro-Israel speakers at events. 
really shouldn't be banning any speakers at any events, especially if you are receiving government funding. It's, it's the whole situation is so wild to me. These kids really don't understand anything about, about it. I'm sure they, you know, they, they, they decide we're going to pick the side, we're going to pick a side and we're going to go balls deep on it. And we're going to, you know, and that's fine. That's fine. But now you're begging for money. You had an Ivy league education. You're a Harvard student. Okay. You got out and you throw it all the way. Um, I guess I just don't care that much. Um, I understand, you know, the way that you feel about, you know, what's going on perhaps in your homeland, but most of these people who are doing this are not from there. They're rich white kids that grow, grew up rich and white. Uh, and they're just down for the cause. It's just like all those upper middle class white kids that went into the cities and did all that damage uh, for old for old what's his name, okay? Uh, except there were no consequences then. But <laughs> you mess with uh, you mess with uh, some people, uh, there are real consequences. And uh, some of the things people say about <laughs> groups uh, are also. You know, it, it, you see it play out, man. You can't screw with uh, a lot of these. Uh, you just can't screw around sometimes, I'll say. Um, there are real world consequences for these things. And uh, begging for money when you're already an Ivy League student is pretty hilarious to me.